Greetings, students, teachers, faculties, friends. We're here at Aiken High School. We're here to talk about college admissions. My name is Byron Bush. I'm with APS doing business development. Um, I'm going to be your moderator today. So we're going to go around and introduce everyone. Uh, they're going to speak their names and talk about what schools they're from. And then we're going to get started. Thank you all for tuning in. We'll start with Mr. Daniel. Yes, so my name is Daniel Browning. I'm an admissions counselor with Augusta University. Yes, my name is Quentin White. I'm a high school coordinator slash recruitment specialist at Augusta Technical College. I'm Missy Ushery. I am at Georgia Military College as the admissions director and the recruiting manager. I'm Andrew Hendricks, director of admissions at the University of South Carolina, Aiken. And I'm Melissa Johnson, director of recruitment and student experience at Aiken Technical College. And so we're going to jump right in. We're going to, we have a few questions for you, and we're going to talk about some of the impacts of the pandemic uh, with college. So just jumping on in, what are some of the biggest impacts that you have seen from COVID on your campus with your students? Uh, what kind of resources are available for students and families to help them adjust? Well, at Aiken Technical College, we quickly moved all of our classes online for the spring and then uh, the bulk of our classes is fall online. We have ramped up our tutoring and our support services, offering students online options as well as in-person options this fall. Students can, all, can also come into our enrollment services in person but also online as well for advising and registration. So we, I guess, mixed up and made a hybrid of all of our services that we offer for our students. At, US, at USC Aiken, I would say that the biggest change has been, or two big changes have been the move to more online courses uh, for our current students, as well as our switch to being a test optional institution for admission purposes. Uh, those are massive changes for our campus, um, and we're excited that we are able to continue operations very safely and help students to be secure in their educational pursuits. So, uh you know, it's good to have online options and, and, and ways for students to continue to learn without going in the classroom. But are those are there still opportunities for students to get face-to-face -face, uh, learning opportunities uh, as well? Yes. Yes. Yeah, so, yeah. yeah. So at Augusta University, we are uh, essentially hybrid. We kind of offer a variety of, of everything, if you will. We have moved uh, some classes online. We have hybrid, and we have strictly in-person classes. We've opened up a variety of buildings that typically don't house classes as well to provide bigger spaces so that social distancing can take place. So we do have a variety of options for those, depending on what your um, taste is for, for the type of class. A lot of our um, classes also require labs. And so those are the classes primarily that are on campus. But again, for the spring, again, we're gradually moving back to more of a mixture of the hybrid and online and in-person courses to offer again a lot of options for the students who have different needs. What we did encounter is that a lot of our students, when we went online, did not have the resources to take online courses. So we had to provide laptops, and then we provide hotspots. We made hotspots on campus so that students, again, could have the support they need to be successful in their classes. One of the things that we noticed at Georgia Military College is that some students who had planned to go off to college, move away from home, actually chose to stay home. And while some were considering just taking a gap year, we actually encouraged them to enroll in a local community college or a college here in town. Uh, for one thing, it saves a ton of money um, to stay home. And um, the other thing is that you're not wasting time. You're not gonna be falling behind on your credit hours. Uh, one of the things that the pandemic did for Georgia Military College is that it kind of forced us to really look at other ways to provide education. And so we now are open. Our campus is open and open back up for fall one um, at the beginning of August. And we have in-seat classes. We also offer the online classes that we've always offered. But the third way that we now um, have a, a educational platform is synchronous learning is what we call it to where the student signs up for a particular class that meets at a specific time uh, on specific days of the week just as if they were coming to campus but instead they're going to log in on their on their computer and they're going to be able to see the professor in the classroom 
who may actually have some students in class with him or her, but they can log in from wherever they are and they can participate and ask questions and be a part of an actual classroom setting. Um, and so we call that synchronous learning. And so I think that that is, if there is a positive to come out of this pandemic, it is that it's forced a lot of folks in education to think outside of the traditional boxes we've become accustomed to. But, I think, uh, you know, Augusta University, Augusta Tech, Georgia Military, USC Aiken, Aiken Technical College, those are all colleges that are local to this community. Could you all talk about some of the advantages uh, for students to pursue higher education right here locally in their hometowns? Um, we offer a lot of different programs. We have over 100 plus programs. And I, when I go out and recruit, I tell a lot of students, um, staying at home is actually it saves a lot of money, um, depending on what you want to do or what you know what program that you want to uh, take up in college. You mm -hmm. may have to travel off because you may not offer it locally, but we offer a lot of different things. And cost, cost is a, a huge thing. We um, actually have a hundred dollars per credit hour, which if anybody looks up college tuition, that's cheap compared to a lot of college tuition. I know when I was in college, it was way less than that. But um, it just you know staying home locally can save you a lot of money. Then. We have a lot of things locally that can um, help you uh, and further your education. I would say stay local if you can. A lot, I know a lot of students want to go off to school, but you know, staying locally can save you a lot of money. You can be in this day and you uh, graduate from college. And I know a lot of people that are in a lot of days. So. Anybody else want to expand on that? Well, I just would say I think students in this community do benefit from having five outstanding institutions. You've got a nice mix of two-year and four-year institutions. You've got folks who can do very uh, technical and vocational training, but also uh, the, the traditional liberal arts and professional schools that you see at four-year universities. Um, so it is a nice blend. Students have lots of choices right here in the home uh, area. And while students may think they want to go off to college, um, it's also important to remember that they can go off to college right here in the community. Both Augusta University and USCA can offer wonderful housing opportunities on our campus. Uh, we have students from Aiken. We have students from the CSRA who live on campus with us. So uh, mom and dad aren't there with you. You are enjoying the true college life that you expect from a four-year university, uh, but right here in the community. Well, well even on uh, the, the on-campus housing, what are some of the precautions that uh, your schools are taking in place to handle those students who are coming on uh, campus for housing, and how are we keeping them safe? I, mean, I guess I can kind of touch on that a little bit. For, for us in our dorms right now, uh, they are clearly, and I'm sure everyone else is doing this as well, sanitation is a huge thing, so daily sanitation cleans are happening. Um, they're also limiting uh, visitation for outside visitors that are not within the community of Augusta University, so that we're we're keeping that safe um, and, and they're, they're keeping the room safe and clean as well um, and keeping floors distance. So they are doing a very good job in terms of clean, cleaning and, and making sure that things are, are in place. And I, I'm guessing AU did this, USC Aiken has set aside some quarantine spaces in case a student is diagnosed with COVID-19. Uh, they have a place that they can live safely, uh, do the online coursework that, that we're talking about, the hybrid or uh, synchronous kinds of coursework um, to make sure that we are doing the contact tracing and the, the kind of steps recommended by the CDC to help keep our community safe. Um, thankfully, USC Aiken has been blessed, and I, I'll knock on wood, um, we're averaging somewhere around one or two cases per week. We are aggressive in trying to make sure that we keep our campus safe, um, and housing is a big part of that. For the 21-22 application season, how are we handling testing requirements? Has, has COVID affected uh, the, the requirements for students to get in school, even uh, dual enrollment, AP credits? How has uh, COVID affected uh, that part of the process? Well, for us, um, the, we're kind of already test optional, but the placement testing is a huge part of our admission requirements. We've made testing available online or on this next cohort of dual enrollment students, we're looking at optional ways to assess their aptitude for being college ready or ready for college level coursework. 
And so we are um, adjusting as we go along, anticipating that we'll continue to have to adjust into the future. But with us, it is placement testing. We do make that available online. Students can come in, but they do have to um, schedule a time to take those tests. But then again, we are working with our counselors to figure out additional ways that we can assess if students are ready for college level courses for dual enrollment, and even for coming in as regular students, we do have options for assessing their readiness. So we have a very unique setup right now with, with requirements. We have gone uh, test optional, if you will. We're not requiring the test scores. However, we are accepting them. And what that means is we kind of have two options. One is the newer option in terms of what the state has set, uh, where we're only looking at the GPA requirement. But the other option is that we are still looking at considering the freshman index. So if you feel at any point as a student you might not meet that only GPA requirement, then definitely consider the test optional side of things where um, you do have the test scores and we do take your GPA all into account for that freshman index. Um, that does help a lot of students on different ranges of, of scoring. Uh, we also have pathway programs, the honors program, things like that. They're still working through those details in terms of what that looks like from a test optional because tests are important for those programs. So they are still looking into that. But we are, um, we're not requiring test scores, but it is something that you can consider if, if you feel like you don't need a GPA requirement. And I, if I could add on there, I, I think when we talk about test optional, it's important for students to, uh, to understand are we saying admission to the university or the institution is test optional versus those next level things like honors programs, like scholarship opportunities? USC Aiken adopted a test optional policy for admission. We are encouraging students who have solid test scores to send them to us uh, because it could be helpful in the scholarship process. The more data points we have on a student to, for a student to be able to prove his or her ability level um, particularly high achievers helps to award scholarships and those next level kinds of opportunities. Uh, test optional is a new issue for lots and lots of us. We have traditionally relied on the tests as a point uh, to compare all students. Every school is different. USC Aiken has always downplayed the, the importance, the, the percentage value of the tests in our admissions process. Uh, we've always weighted high school performance much more heavily than test scores, as I think a lot of schools do. Um, but now we've taken out the tests as a requirement. And so it's an opportunity for students, but my recommendation was, is that means your high school coursework is all that much more important. You've got to do solid work in your high school work, post those good GPAs, class ranks, because that's what's going to help you to be admitted. And next steps. Georgia Military College actually is an open access college, so we don't necessarily look at GPA for acceptance purposes. However, um, the, the uh, GPA now plays into placement uh, for learning support courses. Um, we used to um, ask students to send in SAT or ACT, or we would schedule them for ACUPLACER. And now we don't necessarily require any of that. We would simply look at the students' grades in English and in math, um, and then look at the GPA to determine if the student needs learning support or not. We still, and I think everybody still would, encourage a student that if they have taken the SAT or ACT, please send those scores when you apply. Because again, it does help us to sort of check the box and look at the checkpoints that we need to be able to evaluate placement for a student. Um, and if you have the opportunity to plan to take that test before you enroll for fall of next year, 2021, then certainly that's encouraged. Now, testing, I love to talk about testing now because when people come into my office, that's the first thing I say. School is so easy to get into right now. Um, we're waiting testing on the admission side for regular students. Now, we have some programs that you have to still take the test. Uh, we have a basic law enforcement program where students come in to be a police officer. You still have to take a test unless you have an associate's degree or a bachelor's degree. And I do enrollment students, if you don't have over a 2.6 whole GPA after 10th grade, you have to take the accuracy test. Or either if you have SAT or ACT scores. So right now, I tell students it's actually the easiest time to get in school. So I'm going to switch modes for a second. You know, I, I, every student and every family has a story, and all of their stories matter. 
Um, if I'm a student who's in a position that I need to go to work to support myself or support my family, what kind of degree options or classes would be available to me? Well, for us, um, that kind of is our, those are our niche students. We're just, uh, classes and our programs are designed for the working student. Um, for the students who may be returning or changing careers, um, we're, um, we have a dedicated mission for workforce development. So a lot of our programs are designed to meet the workforce needs in the community that are present right now. So for those people who may be interested in a certain job or career at a certain corporation or uh, plant in the area, we might be the first place that you might want to look. We will have those six month certifications or 12 month certifications, you know, the short term degrees, so that you can come to us and get the quick training that you need to position yourself for the better jobs that you're looking for. Um, for those who are looking to go on, you know, you can start with us, take a couple of your core classes with us, take all of your core classes with us, and then we'll send you up the hill, <laughs> here in you know, we'll send you across the bridge of um, Augusta University. So we, again, have all of the options that we can cover for students wherever they are. And I think all of us try to strive very hard to meet students where they are to meet their needs. Anybody else will? Yeah. I was going to say, uh, I can answer that question in a little bit of a different direction. Mm -hmm. uh, we actually have positions where students can work on campus. And so that's the really cool thing um, that is an opportunity for students who are Pell eligible. There are federal work study positions on campus. We pay our students $10 an hour. They can work up to 19 hours a week. Uh, we also have student ambassador positions and part-time positions where the student can be a GMC employee and can actually attend classes and we are much more flexible around your school schedule than perhaps a traditional employer would be out in the workforce. Um, if there's a class that you need and it's only offered at a particular time of day that particular quarter, you can register for that class and we will adjust the work schedule for that student. So those are great opportunities for students to work on campus. Can I ask, when you say Pell eligible, what do you mean by that and how does a student find out? That through the financial aid office. They have to apply, they have to apply for financial aid and they have to um, do the FAFSA application. Once they've determined that they are eligible for Pell uh, grant, then they can submit their application for a work study position. I think, uh, the timing right now, it, it, there's probably no better timing in terms of being able to work and being at school for most of us. Uh, speaking with Quint over here, talking about getting a, an MBA during this situation, it was probably the easiest time frame for him to do it. So it's, it's a unique position for, for many students to be in. Um, and to uh, second my colleague over here, we have many options on campus to work. Uh, we have an app that you can download where you can trace uh, what openings there are on campus. I will state as well, the community in the CSRA is extremely, extremely good about working around the student schedule. I was a working student. I worked at the mall. I worked at many different locations. And they work around your school schedule. So in many cases, the community comes into play there and they really help with the schedules. But from a university standpoint, uh, we do do a good job of adjusting to that. And that's what advisors are for as well. Um, advisors exist to really help you out in terms of what your work schedule could be and how we can work around that. So. I think the benefit is to me, I'm a working student. And so we do understand what students need and what they're going through. And we do try to accommodate them. I think all the institutions try to do that as mm -hmm. well. And work study does help us quite a bit. We have quite a few students who actually do work, what's work study at our institution as well. So lots of options. Mm -hmm. So this pandemic has exponentially grown virtual learning. Um, and I know that that's something different, not only for the student, but the teacher. Uh, would you all speak about, uh, you know, is there anything, any advice that you could give a student that is trying to learn virtually that, that can help them be more successful? I, I would say that the advice I would give a student who's trying to go for online learning or virtual learning is, Really, the same advice I would give them if they were doing a, a, an in-class course. Uh, communication. If you're struggling with a particular part of your course or with a topic or if it seems foreign, it is so important to communicate 
with your professor. Let them know you're having a difficult time, letting them know you don't understand, um, making sure that you're communicating and using the resources that your college is offering. I know every single one of us has some sort of success coach, tutoring program, some sort of um, support system at our colleges. And oftentimes students are scared to ask for that support for fear of looking stupid. And that is the point of going to college. If you already knew everything, you wouldn't need to be there. And so it's very important to make sure you reach out and you communicate when you are struggling and that you take advantage of the resources that are available and that you ask plenty of questions about where to find those resources. It's not going to just fall in your lap. You have to seek it out. But you are paying for those resources as part of your tuition and fees, so take advantage of them. She's preaching the truth right here. Um, you know, take advantage of whatever your college or university offers, be it a math lab, a writing room, individual subject tutoring, the academic advisement piece is crucial, working with your faculty or professional advisors to make sure you're making good choices. This is such a broad topic, virtual education these days. One thing that I would note is that students need to pay close attention to what type of online course they are registering for. Uh, you know, as was referenced earlier, there are courses that are synchronous, where the student is logging on and watching a live course and able to participate, perhaps audibly, perhaps via a chat function. There are asynchronous courses where students are completely on their own. They can uh, watch the lectures, follow the, the requirements, turn things in on their own schedule, uh, so long as they're meeting the deadlines that the faculty member has set. And then there are the blended courses where for social distancing purposes, perhaps a class that might have a normal 30 person capacity has now been broken down into 15 students on one day and 15 students on the other day. You still get to see the faculty member at least once per week in that regard and it does allow for a little more of that face-to-face -face communication. Uh, so make sure you know what you're getting into. Don't be surprised on the first day of class for your new semester that, oh, I've registered for something that I'm not comfortable with. And I might add to, um, my office oversees new student orientation, and so I think that is very important too, making sure that you start your semester, like you said, you start your semester and you start your college career off correctly. And a lot of times we have students who come to us and they have not participated um, in orientation, and we can't tell the difference. So we're really pushing like your orientation. We have embedded tutors in a lot of our, you know, first level courses to an early alert system so that we can identify students who are struggling. But again, it is making sure the students know that we're there for them. We wrapped up our counseling services. You know, being able to navigate life right now is difficult for a lot of us. And so trying to navigate school and manage life, we have wrapped up our services and we've connected with services in the community. So students, um, we're trying to make sure students are aware of the resources that are available to them, communicating with them highly, and making sure, again, that they connect and know, know where they can go to get the help that they need. That they don't have, they're not in this alone. And that we are there to help them be successful. I, I heard something there that I, I definitely don't want to miss. Students, take advantage of the resources that you have. The one thing you cannot get back is time. That time's going to move so fast. While you are in school, you have people, you have resources that are there to help you. So make sure you use them. Uh, you know, action without vision is passing time away. Vision without action is daydreaming. But vision with action can change the world. So make sure you, you know, you have a talent. You want to use those talents to help some people and, and, and get some other folks to help you use those talents. Extracurricular activities, uh, you know, such as athletics and, and other clubs and groups, are those opportunities still available to students uh, during this pandemic? Yes, short answer, um, but we have moved a lot of them virtually so that we can accommodate for um, the guidelines and making sure everybody is safe, but currently we have moved a lot of those um, online. Just an example, we have a really big one that we do, Club Best, which I'm sure most schools do, introducing the clubs or things that they have on campus, and we basically moved that on uh, online, and, and we will continue to do so until things are opened up. Um, we have had a few things on campus, such as a DJ who's by himself playing music for the campus to kind of inject some life into the campus. So um, we are finding ways to uh, 
to keep the fun aspect there on campus, but also be safe at the same time. What about fraternities and sororities? Are, are those uh, also being taken to a virtual space, or is, are we still working through that? For us, it's a blend. It's, it's a blend of, of those. They are uh, being safe, but they are doing some things in person as well as some things online, but that's short of the project. Correct, yeah. Uh, finding that sweet spot in between what used to be the normal and what is currently safe and healthy for our students, our faculty, our staff, that's the, that's the challenge, and that's what we're all trying to find. Um, and how do we balance giving students a college experience, giving students that traditional kind of uh, growth opportunity that they experience over a two or a four year period depending on what college they choose. Um, how do we give those outside of the class experiences? Athletics, USC Aiken is part of uh, the NCAA D2. We are part of the Peach Belt Conference. We have resumed our athletics program. Um, we started late, but we are now underway, and we're looking forward to more competition as the seasons go, but we're gonna do it safely, and we're gonna test our student athletes, and we're gonna make sure they are staying healthy while representing our campus. For those of us that are commuter campuses, um, for us, we still always have a robust schedule of student activities as well, because we like to keep students engaged and learning process outside of the classroom. Um, but what you have also done is move most of the virus online, but we're also providing some opportunities for students to swing by campus, pick up some swag, say hello, connect with your advisor, connect with um, folks in the enrollment services offices, so that, again, they can stay connected to us and we can stay connected to them. And again, they can come to campus for um, counseling services, for tutoring and for coaching services um, at their leisure, but we want them to know that we're still always thinking about them and we provide those opportunities. Got it. All right, so now we got to talk about finances. You know, uh, financial resources are always needed uh, for students and families. Uh, could you all talk about uh, you know some of those financial resource uh, supports, such as FAFSA, uh, scholarship opportunities? Um, how should students go about seeking that financial support, and has this pandemic affected that process in any way? Oh well, at this technical college, we do a lot of financial aid virtual sessions. Um, one of our financial aid officers, Mr. Coordinator Scales, um, he does one. He used to do it weekly, but now since the uh, semester has started back, he does do it every two weeks. So he does a session around three o'clock, and um, he walks everybody through the financial process. Now you also can come on campus as well. Um, we have people inside our financial aid office that walk you through the financial process. Um, which is a smooth process now. It's not like I used to be when I first started college a few years ago. Um, it was ancient a little bit. We had to do, I had to get my mother's uh, tax information and, and put it in uh, line by line, but now uh, it connects to the IRS website, so it's kind of easier. And I tell students that all the time. Um, and also, we have different uh, scholarships that we offer for Augusta Tech students as well. And you don't have to apply for every scholarship one by one. What you do is you put your information in one database and it shows you what the scholarship that you qualify for. So we have people that help you with that process and it's pretty smooth and easy. It's important to point out that Georgia Military College uh, does not charge out-of-state tuition. So for Aiken County students who want to come over the river and go to GMC, then there is no out-of-state tuition. Uh, oftentimes that happens when you go to a college outside of your state. So I just want to point that out. But we also offer uh, admissions scholarships, first term scholarships, the directors and president scholarships. And um, it's just based on a student asking questions. It's really important that when you are searching for a school, you ask about those opportunities. Uh, not always will somebody openly mention those, but it's important to ask if you know um, that you're going to be uh, that your family situation is a little different now because of coronavirus uh, and the pandemic. Maybe your financial um, circumstances have changed for your family and you may need some additional financial help that you might not have needed if had you gone to college two or three years ago. So it's important to ask about some of those opportunities. Uh, many colleges received a special lump sum of money uh, through the CARES Act. Uh, that we're able to offer additional financial assistance to students that we would not have been able to offer a year or two ago. 
um, because of the federal government giving colleges that money. And it's set aside specifically for students who have special needs that were created because of this pandemic. So please ask when you are inquiring about college. Uh, to me, the, the biggest factor for students is you've got to fill the FAFSA out. Every family should fill the FAFSA out. It is the free application for federal student aid. It is a free application. The worst thing that's going to happen is you may get told you don't qualify for certain things. There's nothing wrong with any family filling that app out. It's crucial. It is the building block for everything else that follows after. Uh, so get the FAFSA in. For those of you who are interested in fall of 21, the FAFSA is available right now as we speak. Go to fafsa.ed.gov and get started with the process. I'm sure you're hearing that information from your school counselors. They know what they're talking about. Follow their lead there. Um, all colleges have different programs that are designed to assist students with the cost of attendance. Um, USCA can certainly offers recruitment scholarships, freshman level scholarships. Um, ours are renewable for up to four years if you maintain appropriate academic progress while you're with us. We do not require students to fill out a separate scholarship application at USCA, but that's something that you need to be aware of at each school that you're applying to, because some do. Everybody, every college and university has a different process. Um, so again, ask the questions, be in touch with the financial aid staff at the schools that you're considering. And just a, a little tidbit, I tell all students this as well, there are scholarships that exist out there if you just do your research for as small as being shorter than five foot, for being left-handed. There are scholarships out there. You just have to do the research to find it. And just to piggyback off of GMC, um, we don't technically charge out of state to our South Carolina uh, students. We have what's called the South Carolina Scholarship. Um, it's essentially a waiver that waives out of state tuition for all of our South Carolina students. So we do offer that as well as uh, institutional based on scholarships. But please do your research because there are a lot of information out there and I will say from personal experience, because I have a brother that experienced this, for any student that is dealing or has ADD or ADHD, technically they can have a full run of college. Um, and that may differ for college, but that is through the Georgia Department of Labor um, and some other resources. Um, but he was awarded a full ride of scholarship, including dorms, including food. Do your research. There's a lot of stuff out there that you can be awarded if you just look. I'd like to add, um, we offer in state um, tuition for residents of Richmond and Columbia counties in Georgia. So um, again, um, take advantage of that as well. We also have an emergency fund for students now um, that we established actually prior to COVID just last year. Um, the application for that is online. So if you have, if we have students who run into emergent needs, you know, in the middle of the semester, you know, light bills, do those kinds of things, um, they can access those funds throughout the semester. We do have um, a separate application for scholarships, but those things are online again for ease of access for our students. We also have through um, our State Department, the South Carolina Workforce and Industrial Needs Scholarship called WINS. And so a lot of the programs through WINS are almost free or free, depending on the program and what the workforce needs are in the community. So students should take advantage of that as well, not just for high school graduates, or um, adult learners as well. If we have any adults who are interested in high demand jobs in the area, they can get assistance with securing those certifications and those credentials so that they can go into those jobs. Sounds good. We're coming down to our last two questions here. Uh, some colleges are allowing visits, but many are not. So how uh, should a student evaluate a college and, and what should they do when uh, seeking a school that they, that they can visit, and are your institutions allowing students to still visit? Well, yes. Well, I do, actually, I do a virtual uh, information session every two weeks, but about uh, a month ago, I started doing uh, on-campus visits again. Now, I limit those visits. Now, like yesterday, I had a call from a school that wanted to bring me 100 students, and I was like, nah, I can't do that. But <laughs> right. um, what I do is if you come in with your family, so if it's you, your mother, maybe a brother, sister, uh, I, I limit to about five people. Um, so I, I do those weekly. So you have to reserve and your spot weekly. You just give me a call in my office. Um, but I'm doing small tours, not not huge tours right now because I don't have the ability 
Well, I don't even, uh, my DP told me no eating today, but um, if you're doing a small tour, uh, you can stop by. Or if you just come with my virtual session, I do those every two weeks, and um, I give you all the information about the university and um, anything that you want to know about the college, I can let you on my virtual session. So we are now offering in-person visits at 10 a.m. and 2 p.m. and we're offering us um, an opportunity as a virtual online. When we first returned, it was it was two virtual options. We did not have those, those in-person options, but we now are offering both um, in-person and um, virtual. And something that we also developed recently that has really gone over well with the students is we're bringing the campus to the students via social media live events. Um, and so we are letting students do takeovers. We're doing live interviews with different colleges um, on Instagram Live, Facebook, and many different occasions so that those who are at home who either can't get here or just don't feel comfortable yet going, they are getting an inside look at the campus and what's happening on campus. Um, and we do offer a virtual tour uh, as well, should you want to do that. But, but we have a variety of options there for those who are interested in seeing campus. At Georgia Military College, uh, because our campus opened up to the public at the beginning of August, um, we are allowing the students to come as walk-ins uh, during our business hours. Uh, we're actually hosting our first open house event tomorrow and trunk or treat. Uh, so we're trying to keep things spaced out. So we're going to do the trunk or treat event for families and, their, and for our students and their kids outside. But for folks who are interested in information about GNC, we will be doing tours and such as that. And we typically do that type of event twice a year, once in the spring and once in the fall. Um, and so um, the tours on the inside, we will try to keep those groups to small groups. It's better that way anyway, with or without the pandemic, just so that you can get all your questions answered. So typically um, a tour guide would only have one particular family at a time and then would start the tour and then the next group who wants to come in can go so that there is some social distancing. But we are open uh, to the public and we are um, you know, allowing tours whenever students might want to come and visit. Um, and then we are offering a virtual uh, information session a couple of times uh, a quarter. Very similar kinds of setup at USC Aiken. We started uh, our individual family tours back on July 1st and have continued those very successfully, small groups, uh, individual family units. Um, our tour schedule is on our website at usca.edu slash visit. Um, we have started now hosting small group sessions uh, beyond just individual family units and we are pleased with how those have kicked off. Um, we have our first open house plan for a couple of weeks from now and so we're excited to kind of get back into a sense of normalcy. Visiting campus can be such an important and helpful aspect for students making the decision. Um, virtual options are very solid though. If that's what you have access to, if that's what you feel comfortable with, visit with us virtually. We're all here to assist you in helping you learn if our campus is the right fit for you. We're also doing um, webinars every two weeks and for special groups as well. Um, we get requests sometimes for hosting webinars for, for, for specific, specific groups. And so what we're trying to do is get back to our tour program. Um, we have um, kind of been offering virtual tours. We have a virtual tour that's available online, but we also want to do live virtual tours. And so we're um, trying to figure out our plans for doing those and reincorporating those into our schedules as well as figuring out ways that we can host whole groups and small groups on campus as well. And again, offering an open house where students can come, but in small groups again, to see the campus and be with some of our, get to a guide to some of our campus ambassadors. So we're trying to incorporate in all of these new strategies, but I think we should call them long-term strategies. I think we'll be changed and stay changed for a while. Well, this is gonna be, my last question, and it's kind of a two-part question, and, and I would like the entire panel to, uh, you know, respond to this. And uh, what distinguishes your college from others? And what have you seen in the last couple months that high school seniors and parents need to know? What advice can you offer families to best prepare for the workforce in the next one to five years? I know that's a lot in one, but really, what distinguishes your school from others and what advice do you have for students and parents uh, under the current situation? 
since you looked at me. No. Well, you know, maybe we'll, we'll start with Melissa and work our way around. Well, um, for us at Aiken Technical College, I think one of the things that I really enjoy about our campus, um, and I think this is true of every campus, we really are dedicated to students and their success. Um, so that is not unique to us, but the way we actualize that is we have ramped up our services and we do try to be responsive to the needs of the day. We're in, so far as the needs in the community related to workforce, I love that we have a mission that's really tied to that. And so when we have specific needs um, from our business community, so far as workforce needs and trying to train and develop their um, employer employees, we um, can speak to those and be responsive in that way. That is really unique to us. I love our Student Success Center. I think the services that they offer through that center are top notch. We have coaching services. We have tutoring services. We have embedded tutors. We have the alert, early alert where the tutors that are in those classes can start working with those students before they are unsuccessful at the end of, end of the semester. We work with them on writing and all the skills that they need to be successful, and especially for our students who are looking to go on after they completed at the technical college. Um, we really do have a high level of service and support for them. We enjoy good partnerships with um, our institutions in the community, and I love how we work together. USDA, and we will be partnering with them for financial aid um, nights and days, where we'll be doing in-person and virtual options for students in the area. So we are good partners, we have extensive programming, and top level services for our students. And again, the question, you know, we'll pass around. What distinguishes your school from others, and what advice do you have for high school seniors and parents? Well, USC Aiken has been part of this community for about 60 years now, and we have grown to a record enrollment this year of over 3,700 students. We're proud of the opportunities and the services we provide to this community in partnership with other great institutions, no doubt. Um, we are thrilled that we were once again ranked the number one public regional college in the South by U.S. News and World Report this year. That's our 15th time at number one, and we've been in the top three for the entire 23 years that that category has existed in U.S. News. Now, rankings aren't the end-all, be-all, uh, but we think it is an indicator of the quality of programming, the quality of student support, the quality of opportunities that students have on our campus. So if students are looking for that full four-year college experience to be able to have the great academic program as well as those extracurricular uh, experiences that gives you that well-rounded college life, we think we're a great option and at a pretty solid price point um, as the second lowest cost of attendance of any of the four-year colleges in the state of South Carolina. So lots of great things happening on our campus and we invite you to come and see them and find out more and see if we are a good fit. Now, we're not a good fit for everyone. No college is perfect for every student, and that's why opportunities like this, opportunities to ask questions, to visit schools, is just critically important. For my advice for students dealing with the pandemic and the changes that this uh, time has brought us, be patient, give yourself some space, give yourself a little bit of leeway, um, ask questions, ask for help from folks like us, you have friendly admissions officers at every college in the country who are happy to answer your questions. So pick up the phone and call or send an email and let us know how we can assist you. Um, things are going to change. We've seen change over the last nine or 10 months with the pandemic. Things change within the pandemic time as new um, strategies and new ideas come forward. Um, so our approaches to how we handle our programs are going to continue to evolve. Um, and just roll with the flow and, and know that while college education is a serious topic and we want you to prepare yourself for the rest of your life, there are ways to make that happen without you freaking out, without you stressing yourself or your family out, um, and we're here to help with that, easing that stress. Well, one of the things that makes Georgia Military College unique is that um, the Augusta campus where I am is part of a system uh, for Georgia Military College. We actually have 14 campuses across the state and oftentimes when people hear the name Georgia Military College, the part that stands out is military. But I like to make sure that I explain to people that we are more than our middle name. And so while military is certainly uh, a part of our history, our rich history, uh, the cadet program, the cadet training program, the commissioning program, all of that is housed in Milledgeville. 
as is our sports and athletics. The other campuses across the state, stretching from Atlanta to Valdosta, Columbus to Augusta, um, all of those com community college campuses welcome anyone to attend. So although we are close to Fort Gordon and we do have some military families or some active duty military, there are certainly students who are civilians and are regular students like myself uh, as a graduate of GMC who attend those uh, campuses and who graduate uh, and go on to pursue civilian uh, careers, never having set foot a day in any military facility uh, for work, for employment. So that's important to make sure that I express. And um, so because we're a part of a very large system of GMC, um, sometimes students forget that we're a part of this large system, but what they say, um, that's a recurring theme, and when they walk on our campus, we have about 1,500 students at our campus, and those are spread between two to three buildings, um, but they, you don't, it doesn't feel that way. Um, so you walk in and you would never know that we have, you know, 12 to 1,500 students that walk in and out those doors. Um, it's, it feels like family is oftentimes what students say, that their professors know them by name, sometimes even if they never took a class from that particular professor, because we're just all very um, open and friendly and welcoming with each other. And so you get a small community feel rather than the large college experience. Uh, for some students, that large college experience might be what you're looking for. But for other students who prefer a more intimate, smaller setting, then GMC might be an option for you. Most of our classes are going to be between 15 and 20 students per class. Even before the pandemic, it was like that. And we do that because we try to make sure we support students um, and help them to feel like they are part of a small community. Um, advice for uh, students and parents who are trying to help their students look for the right college and the right career. I would say, I would tell parents, don't push your students into a field where you think it's going to be um, a lot of money because the student really needs to know themselves. Instead, you should encourage your students to learn about themselves, to get to know themselves more, to explore courses that they might not think they'd ever be interested in as electives while they're starting their college career because that might be where they find their fire, where they find their passion. And that is really what students should be looking for is what makes you excited, what makes you jump out of bed in the morning, what is it that you love. Do that and find a way to, make your, uh, to support yourself and make yourself an independent person with that passion and with that fire. Because I think all of us at this table would say we have known people who went after a career because of the money they thought they could make, but before they were 30 years old, they were miserable, and guess what? They were back in school going and starting all over again, doing what they should have done to begin with and what they really loved all along anyway. So that is what I would say for parents and for students as advice. Well, Augusta Technical College is very unique. Since my time at Augusta Technical College, I've been here almost seven years. It's a lot of different things that I love personally about the, about the college. Um, actually, we have four locations. A lot of people don't know that. Some people know it, not, not a lot of people know. We have the main campus, which is the Augusta campus. Then we have a campus in Grovetown, Georgia. Then we have one in Thompson, Georgia. We also have one in Waynesburg, Georgia. Um, those are the smaller campuses. They are our satellite campuses that we call them. Um, they offer some programs that we offer at the main campus. Then they offer some programs that we don't offer at the main campus. At the Thompson campus, they offer aviation. We don't offer it at the Augusta campus because, because of space reasons, we don't have any space for that. And in the Waynesburg campus, they offer something that's called agribusiness. Um, they offer that in the Waynesburg campus, and that's another reason because it's a more country area and they have a little bit more space that we have at the main campus. Um, our faculty is great. Um, they're more hands on, a lot of hands on with their students, and I love that about our faculty. Um, and our staff as well. Um, the admissions office, um, I'm a very hands-on person for anybody that knows me. I love to sit a student down. And I may take a student on a tour that may take three hours. Um, I have parents that come in just to, they may have brought one child in and two or three years later they bring the next child in just because of the tour that I gave that child that changed their life. Um, a lot of students just love our campus. Um, we have a lot of hands-on programs that we offer. Um, and 
that's the great thing that I love about it, especially like our welding program. Uh, we have students who come in our welding program and graduate and making six figures. Uh, I'll give you an example. I have a student, a young lady, she was 19 years old. She came in doing welding right out of high school. She's at Plant Bowl, but now she makes $130,000 a year at 19 years old. Um, that's a lot of money for a grown person, um, let alone a 19 year old. Um, <laughs> so I recommend anybody to come visit um, first. Um, because you have, when I was in high school, um, to be honest, our guidance counselors never pushed us towards technical education. Um, they talked down on te technical education, to be honest. Um, if I would have known what I know now, I probably would have got a technical degree and uh, went in the workforce and probably would have bettered my education later on down the line. But I would have went into that field first. But um, I, when I go talk to students in different high schools, I let them know, like, just come see what we offer. Um, and then you make your decision from there because you may have something that you never knew of and now I have opened you up to this whole world of things that we offer. And then you may be making the next hundred and twenty, hundred and thirty thousand dollars in the next year or two. And also our tuition, our tuition is very reasonable, hundred dollars per credit hour. And we also offer that tuition price for our surrounding counties. So all our South Carolina counties, they also get that tuition as well. So my advice is, is come see us. Um, smart people, smart choices. So I guess speaking on behalf of all of us here, I think that we do what we do for the same reason. Uh, we want to see students become successful. We want to see students graduate. And we want to see students figure out what they love to do and make a difference in this world. Um, no matter where they go, no matter where they um, graduate from. Um, and so it always brings us joy to see that come to fruition. And I think the CSRA as a community has done such a great job, as you've probably heard of all state throughout this time, of creating a sense of family, um, really for all of us here as institutions. Um, I had a student that attended Augusta University from New Jersey, and she said that within uh, not even six months, she felt like she was home. And, and I think you'll find that at many of the institutions here in the area, we, we do really create that environment, which I think is a very valuable environment to have. Um, now, as Augusta Un University, uh, as an institution, we've been around since the 1800s, and uh, we have two worlds that kind of coexist. We have a liberal arts world, and we have a, a health sciences world. And um, we are home to the state's only pub public medical college and the state's only dental college. Um, so we've been doing this for a long time, and in fact, we do have the state's largest nursing program as well. So we, we kind of have a staple there in the health science world uh, in terms of, of what's happening there. And we truly have been on the front lines of everything that's been happening with the pandemic and really striving to, to become lifesavers uh, and then life changers when you consider what we're doing on the liberal arts side of the campus. Um, we do have a few pathway programs as well that are very competitive, um, seven year programs that are direct pathways into um, things such as uh, PT, OT, medical college, dental college. So there's just a lot of opportunities there um, for our students to, to take advantage of. Um, we are a four-year research institution, um, and so being one of those four, uh, it's, it's, a, it's a privilege to be in that category. Um, our class sizes, uh, we're around 25 to 30, so it, it may surprise many folks that though we're closing in on 10,000 students total, um, it, it doesn't feel that way, which you probably get a sense from with all of us. It just doesn't feel like what we have is really what we have. And I think that's a t testament to you know, the, the faculty and the student ratio and, and the awesome faculty that we all do have and exist with. My advice for, uh, for you as students and for families is, is strictly do what you love to do. Um, it's not that difficult to find it, but don't lose it. And you can always find a way to be around what you love to do. Um, I hear from many students coming in as athletes. I want to be a professional athlete. I want to play in the NBA, the NFL. Well, there's a lot of jobs that you can do that puts you around that same field that you love to do. Maybe not actually playing, but you can be a trainer. You can be a coach. You can be so many different things. And all of us offer those opportunities to be around what you love to do. So don't settle for anything less. Uh, parents, don't push them to do something they don't want to do. Really find out what you really love to do because at the end of the day, that becomes a little more value than, than a dollar. So. Well, in closing, um, I'd like to thank Daniel, Quentin, uh, Missy, Andrew, and Melissa. We'd also like to thank uh, Aiken High School, uh, Miss McGee, 
and, and her uh, students. I uh, want to also thank Mr. Larry Milstead and the Aiken County Public Schools. And uh, all of you watching, students, parents, teachers, you all have a talent, something you're best at, something you like to do. You know, uh, I, I think about it in the past when if I had uh, five A's and, and, and one bad grade, you know, they would focus on that bad grade instead of focusing on the things that you're good at. So I just wanted to tell you, you, know, you have a lot of opportunity. Um, there's Augusta University, Augusta Technical College, Georgia Military, USC Aiken. And not only is that, there's a lot of business opportunity after you go uh, get some higher education. There's Savannah River Nuclear Solutions. You have a lot of work at SRS, Fort Gordon, the Georgia Cyber Center, uh, MTU, Bridgestone. I mean, you name it, there is a wealth of opportunity for us to take our skills to the workforce. And why do we do this? We do it so we can maintain and improve our quality of life because life is meant to be enjoyed. So we appreciate your time. Uh, don't let this pandemic hold you down. We got opportunity, we got things we have to do, and we look forward to seeing you in the workforce. So have a great day, and thank you very much.